Hello everyone, welcome back to the Film Insight channel. In today's video, we're going to discuss some hotel hell owners that went broke. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get straight into the content guys. We're starting things off with Vienna Inn. No, you Trying to get through the night tonight. No, you're acting. The crocodile tears are there, next minute is a laugh. Vienna Inn was featured in episode 2 of season 3. Situated in Southbridge, Massachusetts, the Inn was an Austrian-themed hotel owned and run by Jonathan and Lisa Crack. Vienna Inn didn't quite sit right with the locals and had a poor reputation. They simply refused to visit the place. But here's an interesting little fact about the hotel. There was a rumor that spread largely due to the locals. Wondering what? Here's what people thought about the place. Going around, people say, oh, the Vienna, they're all swingers. It's a big brothel. It's just, it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. In truth, the basement simply had a fine wine cellar and a mineral spa. Really expensive stuff. This is crazy. I can't believe how much stock there is here. Oh my god. Please shout before entering the mineral spa. Mineral spa. Okay, now before you guys freak out, let's remind you that this was filmed around Halloween time. The first thing that Chef Ramsay came across during his visit was this. He didn't last very long, did he? We found our cat. <laughs> Bloody hell. Dead cat and a cabbage. Really? A dead cat? They for sure need Chef Ramsay's guidance. Anyways, Vienna Inn was clearly at a loss, and no, it wasn't just because of the rumors. Though they put on this facade of being this happy couple, they were anything but that. The couple often argued, and these arguments were heard loud and clear in the dining room. If this whole faking thing were not enough, they would also do this. They'll come down after the shift at the end of the night, and they'll have cigars, have some drinks. The environment can quickly become unprofessional. Lisa would often make customers feel uncomfortable by saying things like, She'll go up to a table and ask them about like their sex lives. You are good looking. Now let's go back to the fake dead cat Chef Ramsay found at the entrance. Yeah, so Vienna Inn was all about creepy and odd decorations. The rooms were very dated and guess what? One of the dining tables had a dead man's violin on it. That was actually from an estate sale down the street. A dead man's violin? No, yeah, no. why not? Who would want to eat at a table knowing something as creepy as that? I don't want to sit across the table with my wife and look at a dead man's violin. Well, a bit freaky, no? When Chef Ramsay asked why she would even think of displaying something as horrendous as that, she said, Yes, yeah. but you have to have something in, to make up that white space. What would you suggest? Uh, my wife. <laughs> You're going to put her on the table? That's so kind of scandalous. I am so confused. What about some flowers? And we need to discuss the food. Was this good at the very least? Absolutely not. The food was awful and disgusting. They are terrible. I mean, the food is so dated. It's extraordinary. They didn't even keep their kitchen clean. Bacon. Oh, no, no. Well, right. that's okay. I dropped it one shelf below. Instead of putting it where it belonged, I put it on the corner. Normally, these things are pretty orderly. This is a complete cluster. Food was left sitting on the line for hours, the meat was cross-contaminated, and they even served frozen food. During the inspection of the kitchen, here's what Chef Ramsay found. That is bacon. Should be on a different shelf. And this here? That shouldn't be thrown there either. Absolutely none of the customers enjoyed their food, and Lisa just sucked at taking criticism. Here's how she responded to one of her customers. Do you want us to take the food back? No. I mean, this is like so I disappointing haven't... that you felt the food sucked that much. You know, it's really, gosh, I feel, well, I feel like didn't... I want to pass out right now. By now, you can probably already guess how Lisa would treat her staff. She was rude and mistreated them all. Check this out. Rude. She texts me sometimes really rude text messages like, oh, you forgot this, or you forgot that, or why didn't you do this, and why wasn't this done? This is crazy. She also expressed this. Well, they have them for many years, and it reminds yeah, them well, to not gain true. weight. <laughs> so, how exactly can you expect the staff to be paid on time when the very same business forces them to buy their own uniforms? Their own. I mean, they're their own dresses, you know? Oh, you buy your own uniforms? Yes, yes. they do. Stop it. Chef Ramsay realized that there was no payroll system and that the staff had never received their salaries at all. Also, they had to do this for their rights. Never yeah. ask him for your salary. We have yes, to ask, we for, have our to ask for our checks. It was surprising to see that the staff still decided to work there. One of them even said, Yeah, I got, I got 20 bucks right now. That's all I got right now. Yeah. Chef Ramsay knew that his hands were full with this hotel and quickly jumped into the renovations. 
but Lisa was ungrateful for all the changes. Sadly, the makeover did little to help this business. Shortly after Chef Ramsay had left, the cracks returned to their old ways. Suspiciously, the reviews on Yelp and TripAdvisor were very positive. However, in November of 2017, Vienna Inn was closed temporarily after the inn suffered from $75,000 worth of damage from a fire. Lisa and Jonathan wrote on the inn's Facebook page about the incident. They said that the fire began in the parlor room of the inn and that their smoke detectors failed. Since they weren't alerted, things got really out of hand. A short while after, the couple announced the permanent closure of the inn since they were bankrupt. The inn was sold for $30,000 in 2018 to a man named Peter Howitch Jr. Up next is Monticello Hotel. Because Look at the size of this place. The business has been strangled. Yeah. It's been strangled by the owner. Why are we pretending? I'm doing a good job of pretending then. Monticello was featured in Season 2, Episode 2. Situated in Longview, Washington, the hotel was owned by Philip Lovingfoss, who inherited the hotel from the original owner, Annabelle Jewell, his wife, who passed away. Built in 1923, it was one of the oldest buildings in town. The business was once thriving, but something went wrong down the line. Loving Foss was running the hotel alongside his girlfriend Ginger. When Loving Foss took over, the Monticello was losing $30,000 to $35,000 every month. That means they lost close to $400,000 a year. However, Loving Foss enjoyed a luxurious life with Ginger. When we're all wondering, do we put gas in the car or do we buy groceries? Only four suites were available in the entire hotel as the rest were filled with this. So what was the next best thing to do? They used the motel next to theirs and called it the North Wing. The guests never liked it there since the rooms were barely cleaned. Some of the guests even found this. Oh my gosh! Most were disappointed when given rooms in the North Wing instead of the main hotel. Chef Ramsay was definitely not happy when he was taken to the motel, so he did this. Um, but this is not the hotel. I'd rather stay in there next door okay. than in this dump. I'm sorry. But hey, the hotel rooms weren't that great either. They were equally as filthy and disgusting. It was hideous. Who would use a brown sofa like that? Oh my god, it gets worse in here. This bed, is this antique? Uh, no. The rooms are furnished completely with stuff from Philip and Ginger's home. Oh dear. All the staff in the hotel were overpaid and overworked, but on the other hand, Loving Foss didn't mind showing off his wealth. He kept adding to his collections. But there was another major problem with Loving Foss, and it was this. Good job, J good job. We don't exactly mean that he was drinking in his room or at home, but he was drinking at work, which made his staff very uncomfortable. Debbie, who had worked at the hotel for 12 long years, said this to Chef Ramsay. When he's sober, I get along with him just fine. When he's drinking, I avoid him at all costs. Does he drink a lot on he site? Does. Oh, he wow. does. Speaking of the food, the chefs had absolutely no control over the menu or ingredients used. And for that reason, the food wasn't cooked fresh and almost all the ingredients were frozen. When asked about the food, the head chef Dan told Chef Ramsay, It takes extra time to do things homemade. Uh, yeah, naturally. We're on a time restraint. What? The staff was not even given time to make a proper meal. So Ask how many hours they get in a week or whatever and they gotta scrape for out. My, my prep cook gets 20 hours a week. So they had to resort to cut celery in the bag. I get the boiled eggs in a bag, done, peeled. You buy in boiled eggs? Yes. So of course, it was hard for the hotel to bounce back with so much negligence. Even though the staff was worried about their poor wages, long hours, and fear of losing their jobs, they were still loyal to the business. Post hotel hell, with all the reformations in place, Monticello was doing great. The staff was regularly paid, their revenue increased, and Loving Foss even joined the program to fight his addiction. Still, in 2014, Loving Foss closed the restaurants and lounge at the hotel so that he could pursue other endeavors. It was not a good move as the guests were unhappy about it. In September of 2016, the hotel was listed for sale and leased online after Loving Foss ran into debt and declared bankruptcy. As of early 2017, Loving Foss was no longer the owner. The hotel saw four different owners before it was sold by Marcus and Millichap for $8.22 million in 2020. The sellers bought the property and spent millions on refurbishing it. The hotel was turned into a 68-unit apartment with ground floor retail, private function spaces, and a grand ballroom fit for weddings and large private gatherings. Most apartment units appear to be studio slash one bedrooms with monthly rents of around $1,400. We're finishing this video off with Juniper Hill. Your biggest problem mm -hmm. is not Juniper Hill. Your biggest problem is f***ing Robert. 
Juniper Hotel was the first business to debut on the show. Situated in Windsor, Vermont, the hotel was owned by Robert Dean II and his boyfriend, Ari Nicky. The inn was a beautiful 110-year-old hotel, and as much as it looked beautiful from the outside, it looked hideous from the inside. The inn was filled with so many antiques to the point that you could mistake it to be an antique shop. To be a guest at the hotel, you'd have to pay a minimum of $350 per night. So with such a high price, why were the owners in debt? Coupled with Dean's luxurious lifestyle, they were losing this much money. We're lucky if we're doing, you know, 15,000 a month. What does it cost to keep the place open? 30. Really? Yep. So you're losing $200,000 a year. It's been a nightmare. He let his friends dine at the restaurant and stay for free, but he didn't treat his employees very well. Robert believes this place is his playground. Yeah. <laughs> the playground for his friends. All the staff were underpaid, and whenever they got their earnings, it was always late. I've given you plenty of breaks. I work very long days, yeah. and I haven't been paid in three weeks. There's only been one paycheck that I got on time. Almost the entire staff is ready to walk out because they are tired of not getting paid. As for the wait staff, they didn't even pocket their tips. Doesn't this remind you of Amy and Sammy from Amy's Baking Company? He didn't tip them. You're kidding me. No. When the staff tried to express their feelings, the ruthless owners said, Bragging about Excuse making me. one plate is nothing to brag about. Excuse me. Excuse me. I am the boss. You can't call yourself the boss if you don't pay them. That's not what someone who's worked so hard would want to hear, right? Such ungrateful owners. To understand a little bit more about the hotel's issues, Chef Ramsay went to meet the inn's former chef, Ida. She said that Juniper was doing well initially, but suddenly everything went downhill. Ida even said this about her pay. I earned $40,000, $50,000 in one restaurant, and now I'm down to earning uh, fifteen. dollars Were you paid on time? Um, not very often. She even revealed something that left Chef Ramsay in shock. She said, Wow. Um, Did you ever use your own money to buy things? All the time. And then I would have to demand to be paid back, or we weren't going to open it for dinner. It's insane. While the staff struggled to survive, Dean enjoyed his life with Nikki in a $100,000 RV. We have a motor coach to the side. And where'd it come from? Is it yours? You rent it? Yeah, it's ours. We, I mean, we owe on it, but we bought it. How much was that? Over $100,000. $100,000? To make things even worse, the menu was ridiculous. It didn't have any prices on it, and when confronted about it, Dean said, How much is it for three courses? $59. $59. So if we had the lamb, it would be... 74 So suppose the guests wanted to try the lamb, it would be an additional charge of $15. Because of this ridiculous pricing, the inn was losing several guests. People are horrified at the price of the food. This is why a lot of people think that Juniper Hill is snobbish. But Dean only had one thing to say about it. He said, We're reservation only though, so nobody walks in. We don't have walk-in. How can you expect to appeal to the locals? We haven't identified the appropriate people to- Hold on a minute. What do you mean appropriate people? Hold on. People who can afford $59 for three courses. Appropriate people? What a snob. Where does he think he is? And guess what? The meal wasn't even worth $59. Check this out. It's not even cooked properly. I'm not rested. I always get nervous when you see white fat like that on the side of the chop. It's pretty raw in the center. That's going straight into the trash. And no, it's not just the food. Dean didn't even bother with the hotel's maintenance. The room that Chef Ramsay was given was unpleasant. It smells like raw sewage. We had a plumbing issue and it's like someone's shot under the bed and um how much this room goes for 350 dollars a night 350 dollars a night for a room that smells of shit. and the reason why it was so awful is that it wasn't cleaned in months juniper inn was home to the two most delusional owners ramsey has ever seen however thanks to his years in the hotel industry chef ramsey was able to bring this hotel back on its feet so what happened to this place post hotel hell and they're not the only ones while Robert and Ari are living the dream, the staff are living a nightmare. By the time the show aired, several of the employees shown in the episode had left the motel, and the restaurant had a new chef. After the show aired, the owners claimed that the phone lines were busy and that the bookings were up on their Facebook page. As for the reviews, we found mixed feedback on Yelp. Most spoke ill of the staff and food. In April of 2014, Dean and Nikki closed the hotel permanently after racking up $1.1 million of debt. Robert Dean said in VN News that he and Ari Nikki were at least six months late on their mortgage. According to bank reports, Dean and Nikki owe $1.1 million to the US bank. According to town manager Tom Marsh, they also owe Windsor $80,000 to $85,000 in overdue taxes. Kenny Lucci and her sister Brenda Bradley purchased the hotel for $400,000 in 2015. They planned to invest another $500,000 to bring it up to code. They informed reporters that the place had been left in disarray when they purchased it. 
The hotel reopened as the Windsor Mansion Inn and has excellent reviews on TripAdvisor. With that, we've sadly come to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. What are your thoughts about these owners? Let us know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to give us a like and share. Also hit the subscribe button to never miss out on our updates. Thanks for watching guys!